So like the video says, I'll be sharing with you guys my experience interviewing with one of the top fintech companies called Bloomberg. You know, a lot of people actually put out information about how they were actually successful with their application on YouTube here. But I'd like to share with you guys my experience and how I actually got rejected. So just for context, I came into the UK to study Masters in Accounting and Finance as an international student. And I actually started this program last year, January. And from the get-go, I was already putting an application through. And listen, it didn't take that long for me to start getting my rejection. So halfway into my research, I found out that there's something called target universities and non-target. And I realized my university is part of the non-target university, meaning many of these companies would naturally not come to your university to recruit because you're not part of the elite universities you know like cambridge etc but luckily for me i was able to come up with a recruitment strategy that i can actually instead of just applying to a graduate program i can still apply to diversity initiative programs applying this initiative i discovered that i can actually apply to a bloomberg launchpad program which took me about four times before i was actually accepted i don't know why if people told me that oh they got into the launchpad program which was like a two weeks um training where bloomberg give you training about what they do and some people were like, oh, they were able to get into it one time. But in my own case, it took me four times. So unfortunately, that was my situation. So I got an email telling me, oh, congratulations. You've been selected to be part of the two weeks training program. Bear in mind that with this program, you have a guaranteed interview with Bloomberg. So I was very excited and I was looking forward to this. So that leads me to the recruitment process. Usually with Bloomberg, the recruitment process is very long. You have to have your CV and cover letter, and of course you put in the application through. Once you've done this, they would actually send you a, a test, like you do an online test, and if you actually, if, the, if you pass the test, the test is more of like a personality, and you actually play some logical reasoning games, right? And once you've actually done these, they will choose to decide if you are invited to the next stage. Usually, the next stage is that you actually get to do a video interview. But in my own case, I did a launch program, which was like a diversity initiative. So I, so I was just invited straight to the two weeks program. And after that, we're scheduled for an HR phone interview, which was for about 20 minutes. If you're actually successful with the HR phone interview, you move on to the assessment center. Now the assessment center is another story on its own. So in my own case, the two weeks program, I was very excited and it started, it's about one hour per day. And they were actually educated about what Bloomberg is all about. And of course, the work culture, what the, what the financial market is all about. And of course, the asset class you would actually love to, 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 to deal in. I was actually indifferent about the asset class I would love. I didn't actually know at the time. And, and either way, that was what the program was for, the two weeks program. Gradually, one week after, I started falling in love with the company. One way or the other, I matched everything I was looking for. One day, a company that is passionate about the environment, passionate about the community, a company that I genuinely believe would have would give in return a valuable compensation for whatever I'll be, whatever value I'll be adding whilst I join. And of course, a company that can sponsor my tier two visa. So after through the two weeks program, I met a few people connected on LinkedIn, and of course, we built a what and we joined a WhatsApp group. And from there, we started planning ahead of what's going to happen, how do we go about it, and one way or the other, we were able to come up with initiatives that helped us going forward. So after the two weeks program, we were sent an email telling us that, oh, this is the period we can select for the phone interview. And I selected my date and I prepared hard enough. But to be honest with you, I was not so bothered, you know, because I was like, mm, it's still the early part. And listen, I've been getting so much rejections. I'm like, what do I have to lose? So I just went there with open mind. Listen, I even forgot that I actually have the interview that day. But luckily for me, I did a mock with my friend, right? A day before that day. And I, I felt like I was decently ready. But I forgot one way or the other. 4 p.m., I just got a call. Man. I was actually watching a movie. I just got a phone call on my phone. Oh, like, oh this is uh, from Bloomberg, you know, and are you, is this now a good time for your interview? And to be honest, I was, I was shocked. I was kind of scared. And I was like, okay, you know, yeah, yeah, this is still a good time. Let's do it. And we started. One time I have Bloomberg, they tell you who is going to recruit, who you're going to do your interview with. So I went to the recruiters. LinkedIn and I was able to understand one a few interests that she might have. Luckily for me, I went to France, stayed in France, so she speak um, she speak a few language and I was asking her how she actually have been able to use a multilingual skill at Bloomberg. And she, we just had a connection. And before we actually finished the interview, she told me, listen, I'll be honest with you, you're successful and I'll just advance it to the next step. I was able to get an email and I scheduled myself for the assessment center, which was the final round interview for January. And actually this was around November, so I had it about one, over one month to prepare. And every day, myself and this group of friends that we created a WhatsApp group, we come together, discuss some stuffs, 
about Bloomberg, do mock interview, or we'll criticize ourselves, review past questions or information we actually get from Glassdoor or from people that share tips on LinkedIn. So it was the assessment center day, everything started around nine, and I walk you through how the assessment center works with Bloomberg. So the first thing is icebreaker, like the HR department understand that you guys are intense and they will just break the ice. But I think they say fun fact, I even told them one fun fact about me is like I enjoy rapping, I almost rapped, I don't know. Thank God I didn't do that. So anyways, and that was it, everyone felt, you know, eased. And the next thing was the Bloomberg Terminal demo. Like you, there were, there were about two of the employees who actually showcased some stuff on how the terminal works, how to resolve some client issues. By the way, I applied to analytics and sales. And what analytics and sales department just does is, there's a customer service department that answers customers' issues, but the, analysis, but the analytics and sales department is more technical role that can help customers with respect to their complaints. And that was the department I applied to. And the demo was done, I asked a few questions, I asked a few intelligent questions, and everything was going fine for me. So what was the next stage? The next stage was a group work. The group work will be split into a group of five people, and you'll be giving a case study. Our case study was around Apple, I can't remember precisely, and we had to, there was about four questions, and everybody was, it was intense, because we had to log into our email to read through this, but I had my strategy in place. What I did was I just skimmed it. In three minutes, I was able to understand what I need to do, what question I'll be answering. So what I did was I just introduced myself. Hello guys, my name is Kolade. I'm very happy to be part of this team. And I, I would like to propose a few things we can do that can help us succeed. And I just recommend to them that I'm willing to take, to be the timekeeper. And before I landed, my friend was actually part of the group was in my team. And it was like, he complimented me now. And it was like, oh, great one Kolade. Um, I, would, I would volunteer to join down some of the point. And I told them this was a question I'll be answering and asked if everyone is okay with that. And everybody were like, yeah. And everybody picked their own questions. And that was how we did the presentation. We practiced and listened. I knew I was I've actually killed the group work. That was it with the group work. So the tip I'll just give for the rest of the group work is understand you're not competing with anyone. Try to compliment people and do not just speak over people. And of course, one thing is you can, you can also volunteer to be the timekeeper, take initiative, and don't forget to share your own ideas. Okay, so after the group work, the next one was a team lead interview, and we had a, like a five minute break, but I noticed that one of the people that were interviewing me was already on the Zoom meeting, right? And she was like, oh, Kaladi is here, so we can start. I'm like, hey, no, <laughs> let me quickly go and package. So I was like, oh, why does someone want to cast me? But luckily the recruiter told her that, no, 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 there's a five minute break. So I was like, so I just calm down and I, you know, just chilling and i got into the call five minutes later it was the lady and another guy and i was kind of nervous i didn't know how to feel but the lady was like you know what well, calm down this and that and she started telling me about covid our covid experience i had that covid and all. i was more relaxed and they told me about themselves and they just asked me tell me about yourself and you know that was how the first question i got and you know i was growing more confident growing more confident i like to compliment these two people i feel like they've got good recruiting skills and these people they knew how to actually you know, make me feel comfortable. And just to say, that was where I actually knew that getting a good grade in your academic experience means nothing. Because the only thing that the good grade actually gave was a compliment from them. It didn't even mean nothing. It just complimented me. So even if you don't have distinction or anything, you don't have to kill yourself. So another thing about the Bloomberg's um, interview is that you do a role play with the team lead. So luckily for me, I had prepared in advance. I already understood what to do, what kind of way to answer a sales role play and I was you know I performed very well here and I knew I could feel it that I'll be successful in this round. They gave me five minute break. I went to meet up with my guys, updated them that guys this 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 and I was feeling positive. So I just got a call saying hey Kaladi congratulations well done you did this that 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 and it looked like you're a good candidate we'll move you to the next um we'll move you to the next stage. I was so excited. So I was like one more final interview and I'll be working at Bloomberg. One more interview. And I was like, okay, Kaladi, you've done so well, let's go. And I got into this interview. I want to know about me, I'm someone that observes stuff, you know, my spirit tell me stuff. And when I got into this call, something didn't feel right. Something didn't feel right, man. And the interview started. These people started firing me. Come on. The previous one was decent, was still cheap, but this one was intense. I don't know, maybe it was a bad day from them. I don't know, maybe they were under work pressure, but oh, it was intense. There was no gimmicks, there was no, you know, to just straight to the stuff. Oh, so tell me about your CV, you know, and start asking me a few questions. But I was doing well either way. I was doing well, luckily for me. But 
it got down to one question, one question. And the question was, oh, if a Bloomberg client is not interested, says they want to cancel their Bloomberg terminal subscription, how, what would you do? So I told them what I would do. She was like, okay, how would you sell Bloomberg or what other Bloomberg functionalities could you sell to the client? And at the time, I had an idea of what the answer is. And I was just scared, I couldn't say it. I couldn't say, say it, you know, and that was how I could feel it out, you know, I've lost it. So after the interview, my friend called me, we we're just chatting and he was like, oh, he got it, he got into the company, he got a job. And one second later, I got a call and, you know, I received a shocker. You know, the lady was like, oh, Kalade, you've done well, you did this, you did that. And what I was suspecting the lady was when she said, oh, Kalade, how are you doing today? How is it? I was like, hmm, you didn't greet me the last time I was successful now. And boy, oh boy, I started picturing that this lady would serve me breakfast. That was the lady was not like, oh, unfortunately, at this time, we can't offer you a role here at Bloomberg because you couldn't answer a particular question. You know, you could have tried and you didn't answer it. I was like, um, I didn't know, how to, I was very sad. I can't lie to you, I was sad. I was like, I wanted to even cut that call, but I, was, I had to be professional. But one thing I just did was, okay, what, um, what feedback can you give to me? And you know, they just told me, to be honest, you're a good candidate, you know, normal stuff. I didn't get that job, you know. I was sad, you know, for three days, I was on my bed, didn't take my bath, probably didn't even eat, probably once. I, I was just, you know, and I'm a very positive person. People around me will tell you this. But listen, all my positivity was not around though. It was crazy. So, and you know, on a Monday, the third day was a Monday, I think. And I was like, you know what? Let me just try and move on, you know. It's not the end of the world. I just put in one application. And three days later, a company contacted me telling me, oh, we are inviting you to London for the Black Heritage Program, program which was KPMG. And with them, I had a guaranteed assessment, assessment center, which was the final round interview. So I was like, okay, it looks like this. Oh, you know, to be honest with you, that particular experience with Bloomberg, you know, it shook my confidence. And, you know, I, I realized that, listen, to get a job is not easy here in the UK. So how did I actually just beat this rejection? To be honest, it was difficult, but the best, one thing I'll just tell you that, listen, rejection is part of the journey. You're going to get rejected, but you have to keep going. You have to be the tribe of people that want the same thing like you. So that when you're rejected or when you facing difficult moment, these people can inspire you. You have to be with people that are succeeding. You have to look up to, you have to follow people that are within your company or your dream company and ask them for, you know, a coffee chat. How have they been successful? What have they done? Fast forward, I was able to get like two offers from top companies that I wanted. And you know, yeah, yeah. I hope you found this very insightful. I just wanted to share this experience and let you understand that breakfast and or rejection like you guys call it. As part of the journey and that's it for this video i'm very happy to see you guys once again consider subscribing to my channel and i look forward to seeing you in the next video la prochaine